here, those of you who are watching online, we're glad that you are here with us this morning. I got to start out just so y'all know where I am uh, this morning. Uh, first of all, yes, uh, I broke a bone in my hand, which was payback for making a comment about my son a couple weeks ago. And um, this thing's driving me nuts, crazy, uh, and just so you know, that's what's going on here. Other thing, I've been sick all week. Not COVID, promise. Uh, just been doped up on NyQuil and Sudafed all week. So I didn't have any yesterday, and so the residual effects are still carrying over today. So just want you to be fully aware that I have no idea what's going to come out of my mouth this morning. Um, <laughs> Hey, we're, we're starting this series uh, today, and I, I just wanted to go at some things um, that I, I think that we have all believed um, some, some lies, some myths, some things that, that aren't true. And so I, I wanted to, to head a few topics head on with the truth, okay? So... I don't know where you are. Um, there is a Lizzo song that says the truth hurts. OK, so just know that over the course of the next few weeks, there there may be um, there may be some uncomfortableness in all of this. And it's OK. It's a good thing. All right. Um, today in what we're talking about, uh, it's affecting all of us. And it's, it's we may not realize it. We may not understand, but there are some lies, some myths that have affected all of us. And we all have this in common. And, and just so you can understand, how, how many of us here this morning, even if you're online, there's emojis where you can raise your hand. Raise your hand if you're here. Uh, how many of us here, like, we're uh, married relationship? Go ahead. Just, yep, 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 yep. Okay, married relationship, yes. Would you say that marriage is complicated? Anybody? Okay. Brian says no, it's bliss. It's always has, always has been. Um, how many uh, of you, let's think about this when it comes to relationships, have dated or are dating? Anybody? I mean, I've dated in the past. Anybody else? Yeah? Okay. Um, is dating complicated? Yes. 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 How many of us have either personally gone through or have had a family member or a friend who has gone through divorce? Do we know people there? Yeah. Okay. So, and people would say divorce is complicated, <laughs> right? So in all of this, I wanted us to understand that we, we have a lot in common and we're all walking through something in life together, some experiences. And while they may be different, there are some similarities. And uh, part of the complications when it comes to relationships has to do with the, the lies that we've believed, things that, that aren't true, but that are really fiction and based on fantasy. And a couple of these things when it comes to relationships that I really wanted to just hit head on when it comes to fantasies, two of the biggest lies that I see when it comes to relationships, um, is number one, the fantasy of this magical moment, all right? Now, you, you may not think about it this way, but this is how a lot of people come into marriage. So whether you're single dating, whatever, or maybe you already are married, or now you're divorced, or whatever, you can, you can see what I'm talking about here, this magical moment that all of a sudden you're going to uh, have this ceremony and this celebration, and everything changes. It's like magic. Just, it's, it's all going to be good now. That saying, I do will instantly somehow negate the decisions of the past. And the lack of any preparation headed into this relationship. Yeah, something that willingness doesn't equate to preparedness. Would you agree? Okay. And in all of life, we don't function this way. 
But then we think with like marriage, there's going to be this magical moment. Okay. And everything's going to change. Think about it when it comes to, to school, to academics, like how many people walk in and they're just like, you know what? I haven't gone to class. I have no idea what's going on, but I'm just going to show up on test day and I'm going to ace this thing. Right. And, and, they, th and they think, yeah, this is how this is going to happen. No study, no preparation, nothing at all. But yeah, I'm going to just I'm going to show up. I'm going to ace this whole thing. Think about this for um, athletics. Think about a coach who would come in and just be like, all right, guys, games on Friday. Here's the deal. We're going to show up. We're going to win. We're just I, it's over. It's done. We're going to win this thing. No practice, no drills, no film, no preparation whatsoever. But yet how many of us in life think that there's just going to be this magical moment and everything's going to change? That it's going to change who we are and the preparation or lack of preparation that we came into this relationship. Uh, the other fantasy is this. The magic of a mate. And there's just going to be this magical mate that comes into your life. If I, just, if I just find the right person, then my life will be right. Any of us believe that? No one wants to answer. <laughs> that we think that if we just swipe right on the right one, or we make the right move and bumble and we find the right person that all of my life will be set straight and life will be good. I will tell you this, believing in that fantasy is a huge letdown. Um, whether it's dating or even if you're married, um, if we believe in this magical mate fantasy, we're going to be sorely disappointed. Um, no one's perfect. And we're going to find ourselves, uh, if we think that this magical mate is going to fix everything for us, those of us who are married are just going to like, man, I picked wrong, right? And what happens is, is we're constantly going throughout life looking for an upgrade. Who's next? Who's better? This one's not so good. When it comes to relationships, it's not about finding the right person but about becoming the right person for all of life. Here's what else I know about relationships. So if you haven't figured this out, today we're, t we're talking about the truth about dating, divorce, and marriage, okay? He here here's, what I, here's what else I know when it comes to relationships for all of us. If you've lived any life at all and been lured away by lies, then there are portions of your story that you wish weren't there. Chapters that you wish weren't there that were filled with some bad decisions and they can't be erased. And sometimes we're reminded of those decisions. And this is typically how it plays out. You're at the grocery store, and you're just walking along, and then you turn to go down an aisle, and out of the corner of your eye, you see this person. And you look down, and then you look, and then automatically you know because it is the ex. The one you had the bad breakup with. Or maybe out of the corner of your eye, it's that one night stand that in a moment, your whole body is just overwhelmed with the awkwardness of, oh my gosh, what do I do? Or it's the college girlfriend or boyfriend, and your next response is, I got to get out of here, and you head the other way. And it's all fine, right, if you're by yourself. But what happens in the moment when you spot that person and you're with 
your significant other at the time, whether that's your spouse or your current girlfriend or boyfriend. The awkwardness, the anxiety, some regret, some shame. And then it, the, your significant other is like, why are we in a hurry? Where are we going? I thought we were just going over here to get some spaghetti, you know? And now we're headed, we're like out the door, <laughs> going to the car. And then in that moment, we either lie or we tell the truth. It's difficult. We say, ah, oh, I don't know. I just, uh, I need to get out of here. We got to go do stuff. Some of you know what I'm talking about. Here's my point. There's so many marriages today um, that are suffering because someone's hiding something. Never has come clean. There's, there's hiding bits and pieces of the story. And people think that, uh, that lying and denying is going to get rid of the guilt and the shame, the hurt and the pain, because there's regrets. See, it's, it's complicated. This is complicated. Some in the dating game right now, I'm going to tell you, um, you haven't thought long enough about the story that you're writing. Hooking up, having fun. No one gets hurt, right? It's a lie. You're writing a story, you see? And I'm simply here today to, to point you to the truth. And I'm pointing you to the truth, not as someone who, like, this is their job, but I, this is also someone who's lived through the pain, the hurt, the regret. And I want you to, to not buy the lies that you're being fed, and I want to encourage all of us, whether you're dating or divorced or married, I want to encourage you that we can write a better story. Relationships are complicated, and a lot of us don't know where to turn, um, and we're making things up as we go. So those of you who are dating, I just want to ask, like, what kind of story are you writing? What's the story that you're writing right now, currently? How does last night play into this? How does last month? I, I don't want you to have to go through life hiding and trying to keep out parts of your story because of the decisions that you've made right now. For those of you who are, who are married, what kind of story are you writing? Is it, is it one that's filled with grace? Is it, is it one that's filled with a fullness and a hope? Is it a story that points to redemption? And so uh, today, I, I want us to go through this, and uh, I want to, at the end of the day, I want to challenge you to do something different. Whether you're dating, whether you're married, and I'm going to trust that God is going to speak to you. He's going to convict you in, in a good way, in a way where the truth does hurt, but it's good. And I'm going to challenge you to do something different today. So let's take a second, and I'm going to pray, and we'll, we'll jump into this. God, thank you. You love us, and you tell us the truth. And sometimes we don't like to hear it. Sometimes we, we run and hide from it, but we don't need to run and hide from you. You love us. You know us. You know our past. You know the, the present situation that we're in. You know our hurts. You know our desires. And so I ask today that in this, 
in this moment right now that, um, that we would just, we would be open. We'd be open to doing something different. We'd be open to not buying lies, but um, wanting the truth, seeking the truth. And I pray and I ask this, Jesus, in your name. Amen. Um, if you have a Bible, you can open up to uh, Matthew chapter 19. And I'm going to, Brian used this phrase <clears throat> last week, and I just started laughing. I was laughing about it for a minute. He called it Bible aerobics and um, flipping around different places. Um, I'm going to be in some different places today, but I, I thought the place where I wanted to start with all of this today is something that in our culture, I think that the majority of us are familiar with, and that's divorce. Okay, we, we've all, in one way or another, whether it's through a family member, a friend, experience ourselves, or parents, or whatever, we've gone through the brokenness. It's all around us. Okay, and so um, Matthew 19. I, I was just going to start here because. Jesus talks about this. Some, some of the Pharisees, some of the religious leaders, they decided they were going to test Jesus. And um, so it says here, some Pharisees came to Jesus to test him and they asked, is it lawful for a man to divorce his wife for any and every reason? So divorce was a controversial topic in Jesus' day. And um, the thing about this is, is in theory, the Jews had a high view of marriage. Okay. The problem was, is they had a low view of women. Women were property. They were treated as worthless. And so in this, um, while they're, they're, they may have had a high ideal of marriage because of their, their low view of women, their, their, how they lived out and what they believed about marriage always had to be compromised because of the discrepancy in these two things. Um, their high ideal of marriage was constantly compromised. And so these compromises were made into law. And there were two major schools of thought about this. And I'm not going to go into this a lot, but it had to do with different interpretations of the law. One was the Rabbi Hillel. And this was a popular view. This was a more liberal view when it came to divorce. And this is going to sound crazy, but listen... <laughs> first century and then I want you to think about right now in 2020 but like this view this school of thought I mean they could get divorced for just about anything like if if your wife if her hair was unbound and down yeah you can divorce her man for sure if, if your food was spoiled and your wife didn't Cook the meal right? Oh, yeah, you can divorce her. If, if she talked in, in, in not a good way about the husband's parents in front of the, the husband, sure, divorce her. If, if a woman spoke to a, a man in the street, yeah, you can divorce her. Th this was this way of thinking, all right? For just about any reason, you can divorce your wife. Sound familiar? The, the other school of thought was uh, Rabbi Shammai, and, and this was more of a, this was very uh, strict view, which the, the way that you could actually write your wife a certificate of divorce was for sexual immorality. Okay. So what they were doing was trying to get Jesus to pick, well, which side are you on? here. Jesus answered him. He refers to the Torah. He re actually refers to the first relationship between Adam and Eve. And they continue on asking him, and they say, uh, why then, they asked, did Moses command that a man give his wife a certificate of divorce and send her away? And Jesus replied, Moses permitted you to divorce your wives because your hearts were hard, but it was not this way from the beginning. I want you to hold on to that thought there. Permission versus intention. Permission versus intention. Moses gave you permission, but this was not God's intention. Okay? So let's go back. Let's go back. Jesus is talking about the beginning. So here we go. Um, God creates. In the beginning, God created everything into existence. And then 
as he created everything, he comes to this place of creating man. Let God, uh, God then said, let us make mankind in our image, in our likeness. This refers to uh, this hour, the Father, the Son, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit there in the beginning, from the very beginning. In our likeness, so that they may rule over the fish in the sea and the birds in the sky, over the livestock and all the wild animals and over all the creatures that move along the ground. God's intention is freedom. He freely gives the created all of this that he created. They didn't do anything for any of this. He gives them rule and dominion over it. And the Lord God commanded the man, you are free to eat from any tree in the garden but you must not eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, for when you eat from it, you will certainly die. God is clear. All of this is yours except for this one tree. Very clear. If you eat from it, you will die. God's intention, you can have all of this. There's permission in this. But if you don't follow that, there's consequences. If you eat from this, you'll surely die. So from this point on, God's created all of this. He created Adam, and it's always, and it was good, and it was good, it was good. And then he says, Adam's alone, and it's not good. So God created mankind in his own Image, please listen to me about this. God, I don't know where you come from, background. I don't know what you believe about God. I don't know where you are spiritually. But you didn't make you. You had nothing to do with it. God is the creator. He breathed life into your body. He made you in his image. In the image of God, he created them, male and female, he created them. I could get off on a tangent on this, but I have to, there's a uniqueness. Hear me, male and female, not male and male, not female and female. He created them. God blessed them and he said to them, be fruitful and increase in number. Fill the earth and subdue it. Have children. Fill the earth. Males have certain body parts. Females have certain body parts. There's there's an intention. There's a way that this was created and put together. Don't be fooled by the lies of the day. He says, here, be fruitful, procreate, flourish, rule over the fish in the sea and the birds in the sky and over every living creature that moves on the ground. And then the Lord God made a woman from the rib he had taken out of the man and he brought her to the man. And the man said, this is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman for she was taken out of man. Here we go. This is why a man leaves his father and mother and is united to his wife and they become one flesh. Adam and his wife were both naked and they felt no shame. God's intention is a man maturing and leaving his family of origin and uniting and becoming one flesh with his wife. Marriage isn't made up rules by man. Marriage is purposed and intended by God. This this uniting and becoming one flesh, this this knowing, it, it has its confines within marriage. This knowing intimately that's not to be shared with anyone else. God's original intention, hear me, God's original intention is clear. It's not confusing. 
and it's not complicated. What I just shared with you, that's not complicated at all. Not at all. And that is until we begin to take our cues from elsewhere. Because if we continue on and we fast forward, now the serpent was more crafty than any of the wild animals the Lord God made. He said to the woman, did God really say you must not eat from any tree in the garden? And Eve responds in this and is, we, we can eat from, we can eat the fruit from the trees of the garden, but God did say you must not eat from this one tree because if you do, you'll die. This whole did God really say? See, our enemy destroy, uh, distorts the truth and God's intention. What God has intended for us, the best for us, and he lures us into believing that there will be no consequences. Look, look at what he says to Eve after this. You will not certainly die. So in this, Eve is deceived. Adam is deceived. Eve takes the bait. Adam follows. And all of creation is affected. Death is now imminent. All of creation groans from these consequences right here. God's intention is in giving and guiding mankind to what is best. He gives man permission to choose. We all get to choose. We all have free will. We all get to make decisions. He doesn't have his finger on us and, and make, make us do things. But listen to me, from this point on, relationships, relationships become complicated. Man's relationship with God from this point on is broken. We're guilty. Sin enters. There's shame. There's guilt. Relationships between husbands and wives broken. There's blame. There's hurt. Pain. Relationships between men and women. Dating relationships. It, it's all affected. It becomes complicated. We're all living out right now. I don't know what your story is, but I guarantee you somewhere in this, your story has been touched, has been affected by the brokenness in relationships, whether it's a divorce or whether it's the relationships and dating. And I come back to this whole thing, did God really say? Did God really say? And I'll be honest with you, there's so many people right now, like, it does no, like, for me to go, the Bible says, the Bible says, because some of you, some people, like, they just are like, well, whatever. But I'm going to bring you back to a place and saying, you didn't make you. So who is the one that did? Who's the one that knows you the best and loves you the most? Who brought you into this world? And would you just consider coming to him and saying, what do you say? What do you say? Many of us, just like the people who are questioning Jesus that day, um, we have our minds already made up. We have our own assumptions and opinions based upon our own personal experiences. And listen to me, and we settle. We settle. We say we want the best, but we look like fools just like Eve. We take the bait. We buy the lie. We, see, we often we forget and we forgo God's intention in relationships. And we settle and we suffer the consequences. 
when it comes to, to marriage, divorce, dating, I, I, I humbly, humbly ask you to listen to Jesus' reply to them that day. Why then, they asked, did Moses command that a man give a wife a certificate of divorce and send her away? And Jesus replied, Moses permitted you to divorce your wives because your hearts were hard. Your hearts were hard. It wasn't this way from the beginning. This was allowed. The law let you settle because your hearts were so calloused. This was permitted but not intended for marriage. And when we don't trust God's intentions for us and we settle for what's permitted, we suffer the consequences. For Jesus, it always comes down to our hearts. Always. Listen to me. Some of you may have had bad experiences when it comes to religion and rules. Jesus is not talking about rules here. He's talking about a relationship. He's talking about our hearts. So how, how is your heart today, right now? How is your heart? So some of you are married but you're frustrated. And you're thinking, are things ever going to change? And your heart is getting hard. Some of you, um, you know you're not giving your best. Some of you are on the verge of divorce. Some of you are just hanging in there for the kids. So be honest, how's your heart? Is there any hardness at all? Some of you are single and maybe you've given up. You think, what's the use of trying? And your story may have chapters filled with betrayal and lies and hurt and wounds and your heart's hurt and it's not healed and there's this scar tissue and your heart is hard and no matter if you're single or married or divorced there's this constant whisper that is coming at all of us when it comes to our identity, our value, our worth. And I'll tell you today, like, I, I knew today coming in here that I had about 32 minutes to just try to skim the surface of this. I will tell you, I don't have all the answers, but I, I I can say that through my own story, through chapters in my life that I'm not proud of, that I don't hide, I will tell you this, this whole thing, Jesus, he just wants your heart. He wants your heart before you give it to your spouse. He wants your heart before you even think about giving it away to someone else, he wants to be first all the time for all of your life. Um, the only way that I, I knew to go about this today is for, for you to consider where you are right now. And one of the best ways that I know to do this is something that's so foreign because we love to be distracted. We love to keep going. We think we'll just keep on moving. I, I, I'm gonna ask you to slow down. I'm gonna ask you to slow down this week. 
some of these habits that we talk about here, this, this habit of slowing down and listening and actually engaging in silence and solitude, it's priceless. Look at this, this scripture here. This is one that I constantly come to like, oh man, every week throughout the week, search me, oh God, know my heart. Search me. Test me and know my anxious thoughts. The fears, the anxieties, all of that. The, the places where I'm not, I'm not believing what's true. The anxious thoughts. See if there's any offensive way in me. Point out, listen to, point out where I'm off. You don't have to be afraid of it. He already knows. So just sit in it. And lead me in the way everlasting. Like life. Jesus said, I've come that you may have life and have it to the fullest. An abundant life. High highs and low lows. It's going to be full, but he's in it with you. Ask him to reveal what's in your heart. Because I tell you, if you just keep trucking along from one person to the next one, or maybe you're just in this cycle where you feel like you're just a hamster on a wheel and life's not going to get any better and marriage isn't going to get any better, like this hardness, and at some point, you're going to snap. You're going to say, that's it, I'm done. And everything in this world right now will tell you, yeah, it's permitted. It's fine. It's no big deal. There's no consequences. If I could tell you the countless conversations that I've had with people sitting in my office and people over the years who buy that lie that there are no consequences. It's so far from the truth. You're writing a story. I want to, um, all that came to me was this scripture, and I'm going to wrap up real fast. Uh, this scripture, it was, it was God speaking to his people who were in captivity in, in Babylon, and, but it just kept, it kept coming to me over and over. You call on him, come and pray to him, and he'll listen. You'll see. You'll seek me and find me when you seek me with all your heart. And I don't know, I don't know where you are, but have you sought out God with all your heart? Love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength, and the others love your neighbor as yourself. Jesus simplified all of it. What if our attention is focused on how we were loving one another and who we're becoming. What if we just put our attention there? I'm going to throw these scripture out here to you because I, I think they are so helpful. When Jesus came, he said this. He said, a new command I give you. Love one another. The girl you have your eye on, how are you loving her? What story are you writing? If you're that girl, do you believe that you have this value and worth and that you are a daughter of the Most High? There's no more demeaning um, relationships, no more men that are going to treat you in this way because you are valued. Love one another. As I've loved you, so you must love one another. Listen to me, those who are followers of Jesus, by this everyone will know that you're my disciples if you love one another. How well are we loving the people around us? For you've been called to live in freedom. 
my brothers and sisters, but don't use your freedom to satisfy your sinful nature. Instead, use your freedom to serve one another in love for the whole law can be summed up in this one command, love your neighbor as yourself. And I will say this, some of you this morning, some of you do not know how much you are loved. Therefore, you're having a hard time loving yourself. And if you're having a hard time loving yourself, then you really don't know how to love someone else because you don't know the love that's been extended to you. Um, so just a couple of things. I will say this. If you're single, dating, I'm just going to tell you this right now. Quit, quit practicing divorce. Just... You're writing a story. Do something different. Really love and serve people. Take your eyes off of how life could be so good or I'm looking for the next person and focus more on who you're becoming and becoming the right person. For those of you who are married, like how am I loving my spouse? Let's do something different. For all of us, this right here, this is what we need to look at in our lives. And if you have a spouse, just ask them, where am I sucking right now? You ready? But the Holy Spirit produces this kind of fruit in our lives. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Like, Am I being kind in increasing measure? Am I being joy? I've been the worst this week. I've been sick all week, and I've been horrible to be around. Horrible. But when it comes to these, is this what my life, life looks like? Um, I'm just going to ask you today, I'm going to stop and... Um, we're going to talk about all of this. I'm going to tell you right now. In February, we're going to hit all of this for weeks. But I couldn't go longer. Brian and I talked about this. Logan and I talked about this. I couldn't continue to stand by and watch people believe the lies. Because the fractures and the consequences... Man, it's just a ripple effect. I want you to take a second. I want you to bow your heads. Um, how's your heart? Where are you today? And I will say that um, I'm here. You can send me a message. You can do whatever. If you need to talk, if you're in a marriage right now and you're miserable or if you're um, dating right now and you know that the guy that you're with, like he, it's not it's not where it needs to be. It's not who God has for you. Like do something different. If you need someone to talk to, to help give you encouragement, to guide you in the truth, I'm here. Brian's here. There's so many different people. But I, I want you today in this time just to say, God, I'm going to seek after you. Do we put ourselves in a place of complete humility of saying, I don't know what I'm doing, but I can see that there are consequences, but your intention is good. For some today who are followers of Jesus, just ask that, that there would be this moment of just confession of just pouring it all out and this turning away from these decisions doing something different not not using that freedom to hide our sinful behavior for others today my, my, my hope and my is that you would know this God who loves you, who made you.
who love you so much that he sent his son here, Jesus, on a mission because the brokenness was so real. But this Jesus came as a rescuer, as a redeemer, so that our relationship with God would no longer be broken, but through him, the one who knew no sin, he became sin for us so that we may be right with God, that today that you may know him. This Jesus who gave his life, who died, who defeated death and rose from the grave, he is alive and he loves you more than you could ever imagine. And so today, would you seek after him and call out to him? And I pray this, Jesus, in your name. Amen.